Good morning folks. So jackfruit's pruning is finished and now we are moving on to the canistels. So we're down in amongst the trellis trees, these are canistels. Haven't started pruning this trellis yet, so you, you can't actually see all the way through the trellis. So it's getting a little bit crowded. Whereas this side, you can see it right the way through. So at the moment, what, I, what we've done is we've gone down the middle and next we'll go and take down some of the height there because that is, is well over a meter above the top wire, far too high. Wind will get hold of that and wave it about. And then come down the outside and just remove any long branches down the outside and any, any vigorous stuff like that branch there that'll just keep powering up. It is really hard to be out in the paddock all day at this time of the year. We are in spring, but uh, it gets pretty hot pretty quick, just over 31 degrees. Whilst you're in the shade of the tree, it's actually quite pleasant, but then the more you prune, the more you're exposed to the sunlight. Yesterday morning, I was pruning, and then in the afternoon, I go mowing. This afternoon might be a session in the shed, I think. So, yeah, get stuck into this. Um, this is where those pole extension comes with the battery pruner, because it's a bit too high to reach just off the floor with hand pruners. You see, the, on this side of the trellis, trees planted there, and then there's one there, and on the other side, we go in the middle. And if we look here, you'll see that branches from the tree over here are passing that center. So all they them come off, so that each tree is like an equal size. So that's the other thing that we do, just short, shorten these branches. You've got the main upright there, and then side branches come off. Because there's wires, there's this idea that the branches have to follow the wire and be horizontal, but all that does is encourages um, just vigorous growth. The top wire, if you're horizontal and you keep it pruned, it's badly exposed to the obviously the sunshine and then that burns the branch cracks the bark and then that dies back and you lose that branch and then the same happens to the one underneath because don't forget our trees are evergreen so they're not used to completely losing their leaves exposing the the branches and the main trunk to uh, our quite harsh sunlight so you've got to bear that in mind with pretty much all the tropical fruits and having the branches at say like 45 degrees or something um, reduces that risk of sunburn on the branches. On this branch here, we've got these shoots. It all becomes too thick, too choked. So, so yeah, remove them just again. It's all about ventilation, uh, airflow, light, so it can become too choked. Up here we've got a whole heap of uh, new vigorous wood shooting off the main trunk, so I'll get rid of that as well. So, so easy doing it this way. Any kind of long ones, they come off.
the only thing you've got to be careful with is now that it's warming up, the harder you, obviously, if you're going really fast with this thing, doing lots and lots of cuts, it generates its own heat. And then on a hot day, the red warning light for overheating can come on and uh, close the thing down. So it's just a matter of pacing yourself. This is the mess that I've made here. So in the middle, I just allow it to drop. All this outside stuff, I'll chip that in and create a good ground cover. So this is a before and after. The sunlight here is coming down from the top of the tree. But here, you can see there's little or no sunlight coming through. The odd little bit there. Otherwise, it's just completely shaded. Take you around to the trellis that we've done. Opened it up quite a bit more. See how much more sunlight is hitting the ground. And that is what we're aiming for. That sort of dappled look. It just indicates that there's sunlight traveling through the tree. So day two of pruning the trellis trees, the canisters. First job down the middle to open up tops and then the outside as what's required. I can show you the difference between the first trellis and this one. If you look to the left here, all of those um, trees are 20, 30 centimeters above the um, top wire and here a good meter and as you can see you can barely see all the way down the the inside of the trellis because it's um, grown over so that's my job for today let's get going <laughs> I have gnome stools oh strategically placed around the paddock. Angela doesn't really notice them because they blend in and she, I think she just thinks that they're logs. But these are my little seats to have a rest. It's getting hot this time of the year. Now for the top, and a word of warning, with the battery pruners, really easy to cut through the high tensile wire, which A, creates more work, but B, can be pretty dangerous. So um, if you are using these sorts of things, go careful. So it's uh, once time now and it's getting hot. I'm going to knock off now. I don't know, come down about half past five and finish that as it's beginning to cool off. So day three, it um, was way, way too hot yesterday afternoon to uh, come out and carry on pruning. So shed work. Still hot inside the shed, but hey ho, not exposed to the uh, sun. So, shorten these branches here and finish doing the top, but from the outside, I couldn't get to these branches from the inside. So, that's the job for this morning, and when that's done, it will probably be move over to do the inside of that trellis because at least I'll be in the shade there and then I think it's going to be a hot one again today 30.6 yesterday I think it was getting hot hot and oh while I'm on that hang on I just want to show one little thing I want to show you why we're mulching we are coming 
into possibly a drought period. Middle of October, November, December, January, three months before the wet season is likely to start. We might get odd bits of rain, but it's so hot at the moment. We've had two weeks with no rain, but we do irrigate just once a week at the moment, especially for the young trees. Here we have our soil. So it's beginning to crust over. Um, not easy to break up with your fingers. And then we get to the mulch. There, look at the difference. It's cool, it's damp, the soil is crumbling way, way better. I can actually get my fingers into it. Because it's sprinklers, we will put the irrigation on in the evening. No point in having sprinklers on during the, the hot period of the day because the moisture on this top here will just burn off. So irrigation in the evening allows the water to soak in better, just way, way better for the, for the roots. The root system expands a lot better. We've moved away from the drip to the sprinklers. The hard part about the drip is because it drips onto the soil and soaks directly in and doesn't, as it were, leave a, a wet patch, it's really hard to see if any of the outlets are blocked. So you could be having the drip on, but then if an outlet is blocked, then the tree isn't getting as much water or maybe in some cases not getting any water. Unlikely that like half a dozen in a row would be blocked, but yeah, at least with the sprinklers, we can see what's working, what isn't working. And as you can see there, the, the soil underneath there is still well damp. It's nice and cool. So we are approaching the end of October now. We'll soon be November. It's getting pretty hot and it's getting pretty dry. A lot of Queensland are on total fire bans, including us. And there's already fires down south and inland. They're predicting a really nasty fire season and very, very dry under the El Nino conditions. So because we've got young jackfruit trees that are grafted out in the orchard that we want to protect, they're not going to have huge root systems. So we really need to make sure that they're adequately mulched and watered. So what we're doing is we're creating our own mulch to do that. So what we've done is we've gone around and collected up all the palm fronds that have <laughs> fallen off, just chopping off the tail ends because they won't go through the chipper that well. So they can just go in the interrows as they are. Um, but the actual fronds themselves, putting them through the chipper, and Ian has been clearing some of the boundary trees and we've explained before how weed trees will just seed and then the boundary encroaches closer and closer to the fence line so instead of just chopping and dropping those we're actually dragging them out as you can see here and we're putting those through the mulcher and so then what we're doing is once we've Put everything through the mulcher, chipping it into the mower trailer, and then we're taking it down to the trees and the wheelbarrow. Look, it is time consuming and labor intensive, but it's going to be worth it if we can protect the young trees and keep the moisture in the ground, and ultimately we'll be adding some good organic matter to that soil as well. So it's definitely worth taking the time. It's about four o'clock in the afternoon here so it's not too hot now nice little breeze going 
So it's not that unpleasant a job.